it's back to the trials and tribulations of a decidedly amateur engine builder. I've been playing around with the engine. Um, I want to get it assembled with the pistons in there so I can figure out high, how high above the deck they come so I know how much I need to machine off them. So I've cleaned up the pistons. These were new pistons. This engine was rebuilt 30 years ago, probably more, and they never used. So these are basically new Amiga pistons, which would have probably have come from the Riley Spears back in the day. Um, I've given these a good clean up as well as the gudgeon pins. I took taken all the rings off them as well. Somebody left a good comment in, in the last film about why couldn't I assemble the the pistons onto the rods and then drop the pistons through the bottom of the, the block. And on the spare block here, you can see why. This is the engine mounting bar, which goes in between the one and two cylinders. And you can see that there's no way you can get the piston in there. Uh, it might fit, I think you could probably just do the back two, but there's no way you can get a piston in the front two from the back. So I've been assembling this, this engine. Uh, one of the things I need to to work out, somebody also, also commented you don't put oil under the shells, which makes perfect sense. Um, the way these fit together is there's a the little tang there, and I've been looking this up. So that little tang there isn't really to stop them spinning it's actually just to locate them so that when you bolt them up uh, the shells are in the correct place so the thing that actually stops them spinning is the I think they call it the crush between the end cap so when you bolt the end cap on it it squashes the bearing into place and it holds it the only thing I haven't figured out is if the rods are handed so do the rods go in the engine this way with the tang on that side or that way with the tang on that side and it's one of these things where you, you look it up online and there's all sorts of answers um, half the time the people they're talking about specific engines so they'll say oh yeah the tang has to go to the intake side which without knowing what engine they're talking about doesn't help because engines have intakes and exhausts on different sides um, a better way to put it would be in terms of engine rotation so should the tang be rotating down because the engine's going around that way, or should it be up because it goes that way? Uh, the best I can figure out is it doesn't actually matter because, like I said, it's it's the crush that holds the, the bearing in place. So I'm not worrying about that for now. I've actually asked the, the manufacturers. I also found out what the clearance should be between the, the bearing and the rods, and I think the rule of thumb they mentioned was uh, one thou of clearance for every inch of diameter of the the uh, the journal so about two thou is correct for this engine so so that's all good there but that goes the right way around I've assembled it I've got three of the the pistons in the engine now and I've struck a problem, which is it doesn't rotate. It'll get so far, and then it jams up. You can sort of, it's a bit hard with one hand. It'll get to there, and then it gets stuck. When I first got this engine, it was assembled, loosely assembled. The pistons were in it with the crank, the original crank, and it had the same problem. It wouldn't actually turn. Um, it would just lock up at a certain point in its rotation. And I never bothered to really get to the bottom of that because I knew I was stripping it all down. So now that I've got it in here with the new crank and rods, I've got the same problem. And I finally figured out what that is. And the problem, we can see it. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, the light's not very good. But this is the bottom of the cylinder here. And the rod is actually hitting the, the corner off the bottom of the cylinder and that's what's stopping it from turning so if I can sort of see the rod goes down and then it hits 
so there's there's no clearance in here that's where it's hitting uh, there is actually a a little scallop which you can see it on that last cylinder there's that little scallop there and I think all I actually need to do is grind that out a little bit just to make it a bit wider just to clear the rods because I'm pretty sure that's what's hitting So there, we, we, we hit again, and that seems to be, if I feel down inside there, I can feel the rod right up hard against the edge where that scallop is. So, basically that means taking all of this apart again, and grinding those out a little bit to give me the clearance I need to get the, uh, the rods to clear. So... I'm not sure how much it's going to need and like I say this this was a problem on the, <coughs> the original rods which were these so with the rod in that way I'm not sure if these are they're slightly thicker and slightly bigger down the bottom end there so I think that's what's causing the trouble and I don't think there's any problem with with opening that out a little bit just at the bottom uh, because it'll be below where the piston goes oh, I'm getting so sick of banging my shins on the uh, the spindles and the uh, the dumb arms on the front of the car here but like I say that's the next job is just to take this all apart and probably using the Dremel just carefully grind those out I'll probably give the the cylinder bores a hone at the same time because I'll have to clean it all out um, I need to get a lot more brake cleaner or, or engine cleaner just to make sure it's all completely spotless um, the other thing I noticed when I came out here today so I wanted to use the lathe so these are the the steel gudgeon pins and they they're they're a tight push fit into the piston there so I wanted to machine up these little um, sort of drifts that I could use uh, just to tap these into place without ha actually having to hammer on them themselves I made two just a little short one and a longer one and they're just made out of aluminium so they're nice and soft the problem I found was I'd had a, a dust cloth on top of the lathe actually it wasn't a cloth it was an old bath towel uh, just to keep crap off off the lathe and what I'd found was that was actually causing condensation so when I pulled that towel off there was water condensation on top of the lathe and this is actually this had actually surface rusted so I had to uh, clean it all down clean all the surface rust off it so I'm probably just going to leave these uncovered for now. Um, I suspect the issue is because because it's a metal shed, it gets very cold, and the towel was probably insulating it, so that was causing the condensation. I also noticed the same thing on the on the slip rollers here. So again, I had to uh, clean them up and oil them, but something to just to keep an eye on. I'll just. One of those things you have to get used to in your, your new shed. So, like I say, the engine has to come apart again. Um, might leave that till tomorrow. And the good news is the second... There's a horse running around out there. Uh, the second little cabin should be arriving next Wednesday. So once that's set up in there, I can get rid of this whole pile of stuff here and we're also getting another smaller garden shed just going on the other side of this wall just to put things like the little lawn tractor and the lawn mowers and, and all that kind of stuff in and I've also talked to the garage around the corner about one getting the car transported to where I need to go to get it checked and two to see if they can do a, a, a sort of pre-inspection check on it for me first to make sure I haven't haven't missed anything obvious on it don't think I have but uh, another pair of eyes won't hurt 
I'm just waiting to hear back from the actual winning place about, I just want to confirm that I've got all the right documentation, I'm going to have all the right things to take to them, that they're going to have everything they need before they see the car to hopefully get it on the road very shortly. Even with the crank locking up because it's hitting the bottom of the cylinders, I can actually get one of the pistons to top dead center. And you can see how it's just above the surface of the block. And this is where I need to machine little flats either side here because if you look at the head, you can see with this, with a hemispherical head like this, uh, the valves would actually hit the, um, the top of the piston. So I need to machine just enough clearance that, uh, that those aren't going to hit. I'm not sure exactly how much that needs to be. Uh, I think you just need to machine this so that the, the edge of it is level with the, with the deck. So either that or I need to machine um, an eighth of an inch off because that's how much longer the, the throw is on this. So these aren't going to need a lot at all. But... almost looks like there's a little mark on that piston where it, where it may have hit. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is I've taken all the head studs out, mainly because I wanted to make sure, I didn't know what they were put in there with, and I wanted to make sure that these seal correctly because these all go down into the water jacket, so they're open holes. So you do need some sort of sealant on the, on the threads there. So I took those out and cleaned them up, and what I found was, one, this, this engine's never really been assembled, so these will be okay to reuse. Um, the threads are all fine, but it turns out that the, the threads in the block are the original BSF threads, but the other end, where the nuts go on to hold the, the head on, are actually UNF. So that's definitely not original. Somebody's, um, I guess, made up some studs or... or got some studs from somewhere because I'm, I'm sure that wouldn't have been original that it was uh that it would be using unf bolts because i don't think they were around when these engines were first built but hopefully once i once i get the crank to turn properly i can mark up all the pistons and then machine off the amount i need i've still been trying to figure out exactly how i'm going to do that and I can do it in the mill, but I need to hold the piston at the correct angle, 45 degree angle. So what I'm thinking is maybe using a block of this plastic, um, mill the side so I know they're parallel, bore a hole through it, it's big enough for the piston to slide into and cut a slot on one side so that I can clamp it in the vise, uh, in the milling vise over here which I actually still need to set up. I haven't, I haven't set all this up properly since I've moved it. Um, you need to set the, the jaws of the, the mill up so that they're running completely true. But that then should allow me to clamp the plastic block with the piston in into the vise nice and tightly, set the correct 45 degree angle, and then just use the fly cutter to machine off just just the fraction that I need to take off each piston. But, uh, yeah, it'll be nice when it all goes back together. Um, it's always interesting with the, the hemispherical head because this is an engine from the 1920s. I'm pretty sure the Americans think they invented it because they talk about their Hemi V8s, but in reality they've been around since oh, the early 1900s. So... Um, yeah, you can see how, actually that's interesting. Um, something else I hadn't thought of. So, these are plus 60 pistons. And you can see the plus 60 won't fit. That's oh, just there. So, Because that, the, the diameter of this won't fit into that hemispherical chamber, 
Um, I guess you also have to make sure there's enough clearance here around this edge when the gasket's in place that the bottom edge of the head isn't going to interfere with the top of the piston. Um, that's something I'll have to look at. I have got a proper head gasket somewhere. I can't remember what the thickness of them are, is. But uh, that'll be something else to watch for, that when the, the head is on, the pistons don't hit it because that'll also bind up the engine. This just shows how I can use my little aluminium drift to uh, knock the, the gudgeon pin out without any fear of damaging the piston, the pin, or the, the little end bearing. So I can just tap that out with a hammer. They're almost a push fit. Oh, there we go. If you push hard enough, you can just push them in and out by hand. And these are actually sealed with little circlips that go into the piston just to stop the the pin moving. Um, I only seem to have six of those, so I need to get two more. I can't really remember what the size of them is, the diameter. Uh, 